Libra placements. Full moon in Libra. Please show me clearly what I need to see for Libra placements. With the full moon in Libra energy. Faded overall energy, please. One card. Libra placements. Cardinal air. The scales. Libra placements. We have the chariot in reverse, right? You're the seventh house, chariot is number seven. All right, so here there's doubt, right? The chariot in reverse is like doubt. You know, there's something that needs to be balanced here. Chariot is number seven, right? Sevens are about drive, passion, forward movement, okay? And in reverse, there's something that is opposing that. There's like a halt. There's a false start. Okay, the chariot could also indicate something to do with travel, um, something to do with uh, travel plans being delayed, something to do with some type of issues with a vehicle or transportation. Okay, um, this uh, chariot energy is also about duality, right? Um, the polarities, uh, masculine and feminine energies, shadow and light, you know, all of the polarities and in reverse here um there is this energy of there being a sort of aggression okay um again like i said self-doubt feeling defeated feeling as if you've lost something okay libra placements feeling as if you may be losing control of the wheel um This is a lack of confidence, right? Lack of confidence. I feel like you feel as though there's obstacle after, after obstacle after obstacle that you just can't get back on track. You feel like there's something of a greater power that's at play. And you just want to be able to maneuver um, through this period with a sense of control. But right now you feel out of control, okay? So there could be a cancer of significance, okay, coming through for you. Uh, cancer rules uh, this major arcana of the chariot. Um, so a cancer energy... Um, there could be something that is connected to the fourth house, the heart, the hearth, the home, the mother, okay, the maternal energy, the feminine energy. What else for Libra placement? What else for Libra placement? We have the two of wands and a insight card here from the Mysteries in the Stars. What else for Libra placements? Okay. Fluid. Fluid. All right. So the chariot energy here in reverse. We have the two of wands and we have fluid. All right. So here, what I'm getting is that someone feels out of control here. Libra. Okay. Um, it could be this cancer. All right, we have the two of wands, which could be Aries or fire energy. Okay, and then we have the fluid card, which is, of course, um, my card that represents um, mutable energy. So any of the mutable signs, okay, um, which are Pisces, Virgo, Gemini, and Sagittarius, okay. Um, but fluid can also indicate water as well. So we have a lot of water coming through for you. We have fire, for sure. Cancer energy, Aries energy, um, and the mutable signs. So you're someone feeling out of control here in terms of their emotions, in terms of their masculine and feminine energies here, all right? The two of wands is 
a beautiful card. You know, it's a card where someone is ready to make a decision. You know, you're sitting um, at your windowsill or at your favorite spot in the woods, on the beach, whatever. You're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, which way do I go? Is there something more for me? When will my ships come in? I have the Ace of Wands. I have this opportunity of a new beginning. I'm ready to take action on delay. I'm ready to explore the possibilities of creation. I'm ready to move forward with purpose. And then you get the other wand and you're like, okay. I'm focused. What do I have to do to make this happen? Okay. You have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Okay. The two of wands leap replacements is about taking that ace and doing something with it. Inspired action, right? Trusting your intuition and going. It's like planning and discovering all the while you're making the decision. It's Aries energy, right? Aries energy doesn't think too much. Your fellow cardinal sign doesn't think that much about decisions. They make them. They're almost like planning and, and, and discovering while they're deciding. Okay? So there has been a decision that's been made, right? Um, but there's something... There's something that you're having to be patient about. You know, as Libra, you really are always trying to find the most aesthetically pleasing choice or um, making sure everything is just right before you make a decision. Trying to weigh all of the odds and balance everything out. Why? Because this helps you. You have a difficult time moving forward when things aren't balanced around you. Okay, so you spend a lot of time getting things around you balanced just so that you can be balanced enough to make a decision. But here, there's something about being confident, right? Maybe there's something in your past that has happened, okay, revolving a maternal energy, revolving something to do with maybe um, a traumatic event, okay, that threw you off course, off balance, um, a relationship where there may have been um, major differences and spirituality or age or religion or something of that nature where there was a halt and therefore there is some type of indecision there's something that's well there's no indecision because the two of wands is in the upright you're ready to make a decision but you know there's something that you're trying to make sure it's just right before you move forward right um there could be someone a cancer of significance possibly or someone that is just imbalanced there's someone that could be um feeling as if they've lost you they've lost control of your decisions and how you are moving forward in the flow okay someone that wants control this could be parts of yourself that you're that you're dealing with okay but ultimately there's something that's coming into balance with the fluid card, okay? The fluid card can also represent something to do with um, someone who is that does not like to be put into a box. Someone that is considers themselves considers themselves non-binary, um, someone that may have struggled with their sexuality, but is finding balance and making peace with who they are, okay? This could be what someone is deciding to do to forgive themselves, to accept themselves as they are or someone else as they are, okay? 
Remember, the fluid card is a mutable card, okay? So any of the mutable signs um, could come into play with this energy, but ultimately, there is changeability that's taking place for you. There's flow, there's freedom, okay? There's something unconventional um, that you're trying to understand or you're trying to make someone else understand or that you no longer give two Fs about whether someone understands or not, okay? So there's like this energy of being misunderstood and you're moving forward from it, okay? You're leaving behind um, this control um, and you're moving into surrender, into flow and you're just making this decision or you're being urged to move and to go as you make the decision, okay? Because as you do that, that's when all of your ships are going to come in, all right? That's when you're going to be at peace with your choices, with who you are, right? The Two of Wands energy, it says, jealousy is a hard thing when it seeks to be useful to the rival in love because often imploring grants mercy. So I feel like there could definitely be an energy of someone that um, wants control, that could be envious, there's someone that's doing a lot of prying, looking into your life, wanting to win, wanting to be a part of something that you're moving toward. Jealousy is hard. It's a hard thing when it seeks to be useful to the rival in love. Because often imploring grants mercy. There's something about going deeper and in that deep space finding emotional fulfillment someone may have done that someone may have had to experience the rage the jealousy the imbalance whatever this traumatic event is whatever this chariot energy in reverse represents it led to someone deciding to surrender into the flow, into this acceptance. So something is shifting and something is changing. And on the other side of letting go of control, making a decision, taking inspired action, your ships will be coming in, Libra, with this full moon in Libra. Let's get some divine advice for you. Divine advice for Libra placements. We have the King of Cups. The king of water, okay? So the king of water is very generous, very balanced, okay? The king of cups can also at times um, be not, may not be forthcoming with their emotions for the greater good of all. There's sometimes a lot of tests and intricate little games that the King of Cups plays in order to protect their heart, okay? But this King of Cups, this King of Water energy for me 
represents making a decision to accept yourself as you are. Okay? And in doing so, you will have full blessings of those around you. And this could also have something to do with, you know, trying to gain acceptance from a a father figure, a paternal energy, um, or whoever this king of cups represents for you. This could also represent you coming into this full masculine water energy um, in terms of balancing of your emotions. Okay. This is about intuition and inspiration as well as love. Okay. What's the message for Libra placements? So yeah, with this king of water, we definitely have the energy of um, cancer, for sure, coming through. Um, all the water signs, Aries, and fire. Okay, so the king of water is your divine advice. Okay, generous, diplomatic, fair, gentle, a good listener, non-judgmental, peacemaker, mediator. I honor and respect all being, including myself, and see the commodities Okay, I honor and respect all beings, including myself, and the commonalities we share, and the spirit that is in all of us. I listen to other voices and blend them with my own wisdom before settling on an opinion, making a decision, or taking an action. I gently and lovingly lead others away from fear and devise divisiveness and into harmonious collaboration. All right, so this full moon in Libra is annihilating divisiveness. It's something that is overwhelmingly going to deposit a lot of unconditional love, acceptance, and forgiveness across the board in terms of your relationships with maternal, paternal energies, um, within yourself, how you view yourself, how you accept yourself, right? And it's going to push you into taking this inspired action array and allow your ships to come in, Libra. Okay, so that's your energy. Scorpio placements, full, full moon in Libra. Libra. Please show me clearly what I need to see for my Scorpio placements. Fixed water, the Scorpion. Scorpio placements, please show me clearly. What's the fate of overall energy for Scorpio? We have the hanged man in reverse, okay? The hangman in reverse, okay? So there is this energy of, you know, a missed opportunity possibly. A missed opportunity possibly here, okay? Uh, the hangman, number 12, reduces to three. Um, this is the energy of Neptune, okay? Um, so a possible illusion, possible escapism energy here. Um, whenever we have 12 reducing to 3, it's always the energy of like needing to find balance, okay? It could be a third-party situation. It could be an addiction. It could be anything that throws you off of your 3, compulsion, obsession, fears, um, anything of that nature. But the hangman, again, um, in the reverse position is there's something that you're not seeing. You're suspended because there's something that you need to understand. There's something that you need to come into a full knowing of. When the hangman is in reverse, this could also indicate there being some type of hindrance on your spiritual path, okay? Um, but yeah, indecision, delusion, like some of the unhealthy aspects of Neptune and Pisces possibly, 
all right this could be again delays and like again i said a missed opportunity but there's a need to sacrifice there's a need to have a higher perspective right um something needs to change something needs to shift so that restrictions can be lifted right must be willing to sacrifice um, in order to gain anything new. But when this hangman energy is then reversed, there is a blockage. There is some type of, again, ignorance is bliss type of energy, okay? What else for Scorpio placements? So far we have Neptune Pisces energy coming through clearly okay we have the knight of wands in reverse and our insight card for scorpio mysteries in the stars is behind the scenes okay yeah so you know while someone is in this hangman position all right there's something that's taking place behind the scenes all right, um, there's something that's moving forward. There's something that's already in motion. Number 25, number 75 reduces to twenty-five twelve. So we have twelve twelve here. And in turn, 12 reduces to three. So, this is as above energy, okay? There's something that is taking place. It's faded, all right, behind the scenes. This is all about um, your spirit guides, your ancestors, um, ascendant masters, your support crew, okay? Someone has your back. I feel like this is like as above energy, again, higher influences but this could also indicate your family someone okay um with the frequency of 12 reducing to three all right um that can be someone that rules a third house so this could be a gemini it could be someone that rules the 12th house so it could be a pisces um this could be someone in your family this could be a lover this could be a friend this could be someone that has your back this could be someone that you work with but Something is happening behind the scenes, all right? Um, the next card that you have is the Knight of Wands, okay? So there could be a Sagittarius of significance, okay? The Knight of Wands is Sagittarius energy um, or fire. Um, but in reverse here, I feel like there is frustration here frustration about a missed opportunity frustration about some type of impulsive actions that was taken which led to a missed opportunity okay this card here the knight of wands in reverse it says jealousy induced king uranus who was the heir of King Latinus to start a lethal war. And he was killed because death proceeds of such things. This could have something to do with power, position, Power dynamics, dominance, control, okay? This could have something to do with a father and a son or a master and a student, you know? But someone is rebelling or someone is like starting a war. I'm hearing the song, I never meant to start a war. 
I never meant to hurt you, okay? But at the end of the day, something was started and it was lethal and something has to die, right? In war, there's death, right? Because death precedes such things. So um, this could be an ego death, right? Like whenever I have the Knight of Wands, I always think of Achilles, right? Um, he acted from a space of anger and rage and loss and he acted recklessly, right? In revenge, to avenge the death of his lover. But despite his warrior mindset and his stellar combat skills, he was shot in his Achilles tendon He got caught slipping, okay? When something is incited by rage, fear, revenge, death precedes such things, okay? So ultimately, this is an ego death or this is some type of ending or new beginning, right? Where someone may have felt as if they lost, or there was a missed opportunity, right? Because the hangman, number 12, reducing the three, right? Like we said, it's about a delay, right? Or a missed opportunity, some type of ignorance, being bliss. Someone may have ignored the signs, ignored what was right in front of them because, again, there's like a delusional energy here. There's like an illusion that was casted that caused someone to act, all right? That caused someone to act. But ultimately... Scorpio placements. There is a higher fate. There is a higher power at play here. All is well, okay? All will be well because something here is fated. This is an energy of something coming back around. No matter which way you take, is leading to the ultimate fate. Whether this is something, again, that you've been a part of, that you've had to evolve through, you're good, okay? Your support crew, you know, you've done all you can do, the support crew has come in to meet you where you are. If this is some energy that you've had to break free of, or some type of impulsive Actions that were done against you, you are protected. You're protected, okay? Someone's frustration, anger, ego has kept them low. And you or someone here is going higher, has support. So there's an imbalance and there's a balance. So there's a, a, a difference in frequency. But someone is going higher. Someone is getting the support that they need to go to the next level. And those are the things that are the themes that are going to be um, prevalent for Scorpio placements, okay? So we have Pisces energy that came through really strongly for you. We have um, 
third house energy, 12th house energy. So Neptune, Mercury, um, Gemini, Sagittarius, fire, and water energy that has come through for you, Scorpio. Let's get some divine advice for you for the full moon in Libra. Divine advice. We have the six of earth, okay? The six of earth. So there is um, some type of balance that's coming in, all right? Reciprocity. Reward. Yeah, I just feel like a reward for moving through the illusion, a reward for being able to integrate your ego or to recognize the ego in someone else and to move forward, all the while trusting in the universe that balance will be restored. Now, the coins are dropping from the sky. You're getting what you deserve because the universe knows that you deserve it, knows that you are worthy of it, knows that you are fair, and knows that you know your worth, okay? Six of earth. So this is a Taurus energy that's coming through, okay? Or earth. So let's get your divine message. Unexpected resources, happy surprises, and generosity. What I have sent forth in love comes back to me many times over as the generosity of others becomes apparent and unexpected resources show up. The universe is exhibiting its generosity, reminding me that the world is full of pleasant surprises. Inside the pretty package is tangible aid, a gift from spirit. Just when I was beginning to doubt, I am reminded of the treasures I am entitled to receive that show up as my at my door. What will I unwrap today? What will I unwrap today? Yeah, behind the scenes, it's always been there, always been working for you. It's showing up, okay? Balance is being restored because you have moved through the space of the illusion, forgiveness of self, which is the theme of the Libra full moon, right? Okay, evaluating all your relationships, okay? And focusing on you, focusing on you, okay? Now there's balance. Future placements, mutable. And now we're gonna move on. Ether, the serpent bearer. Ficus placements, faded overall energy, please. One card. One card. One card, please, for a Ficus placements. We have the Hermit. Okay, we have the Hermit energy, number nine. Um, the ninth house is Sagittarius energy. So we have Sagittarius and Virgo um, energies coming through for you, a Ficus placements. Um, but the Hermit. It's all about um, guidance, right? Being guided out. Um, this could be um, like a dark night of the soul experience. This could also indicate someone coming out of a dark night of the soul. This could also indicate someone coming out of hermit mood, right? Um, but this could also indicate someone going in. Um, the hermit is all about Understanding your own energy, right? Understanding what has gotten you to this space and time and your role in it. Taking time out to understand your own energy by detaching from everything outside of yourself and seeking inner and higher guidance for discernment, okay? Um, 
so yeah I feel like some of you guys are definitely going within a lot of introspection that's taking place here um, and you're gaining a lot of enlightenment, a lot of information through solitude and reflection, okay? Um, this could be, like I said, have a lot to do with the Virgo energy. Some of you could have Virgo highly aspected in your chart. But um, you're navigating distractions at this time, clearly. And um, you're looking inward for the truth. You're, you're understanding that everything that you need is within you. Um, you, you just don't want the outside world to distract you from what it is that you are trying to receive. It's like some of you are completely going into silence, like complete silent mood, like just really going in and wanting to hear clearly, um, from source. Um, but this is also like an indication too that you've been there, you've been there, you've done that. And now it's time to venture out with your light and whatever you learn, maybe sharing it with others. Okay, if you get placements, you are um, ether, right? You are, you share a lot of um, the energy with Scorpio, like you are ruled by Pluto, um, but also Chiron. Um, and you are deep, you are depth. You know, you do have a water element to you, but unlike Scorpio, with it, who is fixed, you're mutable aspects of water. But more than anything, you go beyond the water, um, your air, your ether, your this unmatched darkness, right? You're the womb. So um, that's what we have. We have the hermit. Whatever you're learning in silence and in the dark, you may be coming out to share it with others. Okay, some of you may still be in that period of deep reflection and silence. All right. Um, what else for a few displacements? Six of Wands and Mysteries in the Stars for insight. Wow. Okay. And we have final take. All right. So I feel like you are dealing with a Virgo or there's a Virgo of significance um, that is in your energy or that you're investigating or that you're competing with or that's competing with you a few kiss placements because we have the hermit which is Virgo energy right also the number nine which is the ruler of Sagittarius that house the Sagittarius rules the higher mind um the higher perspective the higher consciousness okay um and then we have the six of wands which is Leo energy um, and the six of wands, six of jealousy, six of wands or fire is Leo energy or fire. And this indicates, um, some type of victory, right? Um, in the traditional rider weight, we have like a group of individuals up high, down low, everywhere, where someone's coming through on their horse, holding the victory wreath. Okay. Um, in front of their foes and, uh, friends alike, um, coming through after a battle, letting everyone around them know that they are victorious, that they are the winner. And this is also about gaining some type of recognition or bringing recognition to someone, okay, in front of everyone for the world to see, all right? Um, and again, victory, success, an engagement, a higher level of commitment, um, again, enjoying the spoils of war, all right? It's a new day. The war is over and everyone is able to come out and start to rebuild on land or do whatever it takes. But the final card that you have, a few placements is final take, all right? Final take. This is like my Virgo card because this is about you know, something being critical, something uh, getting crucial, right? In order for this um, rocket to take off, everything has to be precise. That's Virgo energy. Everything has to be precise. Everything has to have a critical analysis done to it. Um, if one small part isn't working, then the mission is, is failed, okay? So um, one less opportunity to get it right. 
And I feel like with this full moon in Libra, um, that's what's taking place. The veil is lifting. Um, there's like some type of acceptance that's taking place and everything is coming together with precision. Everything is coming together with precision. Okay, so... I feel like someone's preparing for an announcement or preparing to uh, take what has been incubating in the dark, in the womb, and bring it out, right? All of this knowledge, all of this information, this recognition, uh, this offer, um, whatever has been growing in the dark, is it ready to come out for the world to see, to recognize, okay? Um, and it looks like it's going to be really victorious and really successful, okay? A successful mission. Um, someone has had a lot of time to get it right, and now they're coming out, and they're ready to show it to the world. Um, and it will not fail. It cannot fail. All right, final take, right? This is about um, perfecting. It's do or die, right? I will not lose. This is precision. This is precision of Vegas placements. All right. Whatever you have learned in the womb, whatever you have learned in the dark, whatever has been being protected in the dark is coming out for all to see. And it will not be denied. It will not lose. Okay. It is a sure thing of Vegas placements. Okay. This card here in the middle of the um, six of wands. Um, Jealousy must not always take the rival as an enemy. On the contrary, if he wants to win, he must be patient. All right. So again, like I said, there could be someone, okay, in your energy that's been waiting um, that is your rival. That's been waiting and waiting and watching and, and waiting for your every move so that they can counteract it. But I feel like there's something that's been done in the dark that they were not privy to that they can't interfere with because it was in the dark, right? You can't interfere with what's not revealed, all right? So something's about to be revealed. It's going to annihilate the competition and you're going to stand tall as a victor in the situation, okay? The energies that have come through strong for you is Virgo, Sagittarius, um, Leo, okay? Fire and air and earth, okay? So... That's a few gifts placements. Let's get a divine advice for you guys. Divine advice for a few gifts placements for the full moon in Libra. Six of water. Six of water. Okay. Um, this is Scorpio energy or water. So this could definitely uh, connect with your energy of Fucus. All right. Six of water is all about like a past life connection, an important connection, a deeply bonded connection. Um, possibly your childhood, um, childhood memories. Something that you are cultivating, right? That you were cultivating in the dark, something that a gift um, that you're coming into um, that you gave up on, something that connects to your childhood or to a past life that you're coming into now that is going to blast you into this um, perfection, all right? Um, six of water. This could also have something to do with a reunion or a union or some type of divine connection, okay? Twin flame soulmate. Um, Twin soul, etc. Or the sacred union within yourself. All right, so six of water, your divine message. A few kiss placements for the full moon in Libra. Nostalgia, sweet memories, old flames, yearning for the security of the good old days. If I am being triggered to remember the past, I can enjoy the warm memories, but must recognize they are memories. Emotion can color 
my recall and distort my understanding of what is happening today. I acknowledge and heal old wounds. I can experience security today. Enveloped in the arms of divine love, there is no need to return to the illusion of a golden era of yore because I can begin co-creating a better reality right now. Authentic healing and joyfulness will be mine if I stop rekindling the emotions of the past. I feel like there could definitely be an energy um, of some type of rival or jealousy or old flame that's waiting in the wings as something is about to be coming into full recognition, right? Something about to take off in perfection. And here, this could be again about recognizing a past life connection, coming into union. And this could also be about someone having to move past something that brings up or triggers something that needs to be healed through from the past. Okay, so again, there is this energy of someone in that audience as you're coming through with your victory reef that is in competition, that wants to infiltrate what has been worked on, protected in the dark, that's about to come out full blast. Okay, so overall, there's this energy of healing, okay, or the need to heal through, okay, these waters and allowing that healing, right, the forgiveness to commence, okay? And that's your message for the full moon and Libra, a previous placement. Okay, we're going to move on to Sagittarius. Full moon in Libra. Please show me clearly what I need to see for Sagittarius placements. Mutable fire. The archer. What's the phase of overall energy for Sagittarius placements? One card, please. That was the moon card. That came out with another card. One card, please, for Sagittarius placements. We have the High Priestess. The High Priestess sits between the pillars of wisdom and knowledge, represented by the number two, okay? Um, as I'm recording this reading, we have that once-in-a-lifetime conjunction between Jupiter and Neptune, the heavy hitters um, of the solar system. And, uh, you know, twos are about, you know the subconscious mind, uh, Akashic records, illusions, um, wisdom, information, imagination, the dream state, all right? But when the high priestess comes out, this is about, you know, following your inner guidance, your inner compass, right? And um, twos can indicate conflict, but twos are about gestation, something that's accumulating, right, for you. Sagittarius placements with this full moon in Libra, okay? The high priestess here in the upright position speaks about um, intuition, okay? Someone is highly intuitive. Someone could uh, definitely be um, very attuned to their psychic abilities, uh, their clear audience, clairvoyance, uh, clairsentience, um, etc., um, and, um, in order to be in this position of the queen of, of the uh, high priestess, uh, there has had to have been a lot of work done. Um, someone has done a lot of work on themselves and has, um, earned this role as the high priestess. This is the feminine counterpart to the magician. Okay. So, um, someone here is in their knowing. Okay. Um, deeply tapped in, uh, to their sub, to the subconscious realms, right? Someone knows the truth about something as well. All right. So this could definitely be uh, Scorpio for me as a reader, but Pisces, Trump's high priestess energy. Um, in Tarot, because Pisces in Tarot 
is the moon card, but this could also be Cancer because uh, the moon rules Cancer, okay? So any of the water signs, this is mostly just very intuitive um, energy. It's funny how the moon card wanted to come out as well. So this is a lot to do with um, insight in the fourth dimension, um, dreams, synchronicities, signs, um, having access to knowledge, higher cosmic influences, okay? Uh, high Priestess energy is also Archangel Gabriel, okay? Um, the Archangel, uh, the body's the archetype of water, um, cleansing, purification, etc. What else for Sagittarius placements? The full moon and Libra. Can you show me clearly? Okay, so we have the king of wands with the high priestess, okay? Um, so the king of wands is cardinal energy for me. So this could definitely be a masculine Aries energy, um, which is also, you know, lends itself to the emperor energy. But this could be any of the fire signs, Leo or Sagittarius, or anyone embodying the energy of the king of wands. Um, but... The King of Wands, okay, is the entrepreneur, is uh, the respected leader that everyone works with. Um, the King of Wands incites teamwork because the King of Wands can be um, a very involved leader, okay? Um, everyone that works for the King of Wands do not feel um, chastised, do not feel as if the King of Wands is over them. They feel like they're in it together to win it. So the King of Wands can incite a lot of um, support, okay, a lot of respect, um, a lot of enthusiasm effortlessly, okay. So here, this could represent someone that's coming in for you, Sagittarius. This could represent another Sagittarius. This could represent a, a fire sign, um, or this could represent just a business or some type of creative um, force that you are encountering. Um, but the King of Wands is all about, right, in the upright position, about um, taking action and um, something to do with a, a creative energy, a sexual energy, a balance with these energies that is being used um, in a very like positive way. Because when we have the High Priestess and we have the King of Wands, that's kind of like yin and yang. Um, so there is something about creating balance with energy in the form of creation. Um, yeah, so we have this intuitive energy and then we have this action oriented, oriented energy. So something coming together that's like balanced, that is going to move a business forward or that's going to be like a, a, some type of creative force or idea that's taking off for you, Sagittarius placements. Um, this King of Wands is someone that's very excited to work with you or excited to um, know you or know what you know or something like that, okay? So this uh, King of Wands energy, it says, um, jealousy made Vulcan change his shape and catch Venus and Mars in his own nest. And the sun made the proofs be manifest with its eclipses, signs, and comets. It's interesting because both Mars and Venus are both in Pisces right now, um, ready to make their way into Aries. Aries is Mars energy. And we did have the Aries energy come through with the King of Wands, which is like the Emperor. Okay, so there's like an Emperor energy um, that's coming through for Sagittarius placements. Um, yeah, and Aries energy can be the Magician as well. So it's like counterparts. We have the Magician and we have the High Priestess. So this is like an energy that's coming together where we have highly psychic or intuitive Energies coming together, the yin and the yang. Um, and 
it's like possibly a counterpart situation or some type of spiritual business or um, Mars and Venus in itself. They are the the counterparts, okay? Um, so as they move from Pisces into Aries over the next transit, you can expect there to be some type of spark that's taking place in your love life or in terms of your spiritual path or in terms of a business or in terms of some type of partnership, okay, that is balanced, okay? Because like it says here, whatever may have been put in place to deter Venus and Mars, right? It says that jealousy made Vulcan change his shape and catch Venus and Mars in his own net. Whatever was done to divert this union between Mars and Venus, between the magician and the high priestess, it was actually ill-advised. It was actually futile because it actually helped Venus and Mars come together with this spark, right? Because in the net, right, um, the sun made the proof be manifest with its eclipses, signs, and comets. So here, the sun in Aries is going to activate Mars and Venus as they make their way out of Neptune and Pisces and all of the confusion into Aries, okay? where Mars resides, where Mars is exalted and comfortable, where the sun loves to be, okay? So there's something here about the sun shining on a divine connection, on someone's business, on someone's um, power, you know, there's some type of activation that's taking place for your Sagittarius placements. Um, and a lot of higher wisdom that you're coming into with this full moon in Libra. Okay. Everything is going to come to a head. Okay. There may have been some type of friction or, um, Something that has th that threw you off of your path, but it was all meant to bring something together. Now the sun are making the proofs manifest, okay? Be mindful of the eclipses, right? Um, the eclipses are taking place in Scorpio and in Taurus. There's going to be a solar eclipse um, with the new moon in Taurus, okay? So that could be something um, that marks uh, some type of event that... Is epic for you, okay? Um, so yeah, there is this energy of some type of balance being restored, as well as powerful manifestation and activation with the full moon in Libra for Sagittarius placements, okay? So far we have Aries energy, fire energy, emperor energy. Um, we have uh, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Of course, your energy is here. Let's get an insight card for Sagittarius placements. And we have Nirvana. We have Nirvana. All right, so this is like transcendence, transversing timelines, transcending, right? Death and rebirth. Um, this is um, just something that's beyond, right? Existence. Like, again, like I said, something is being activated. Um, we have 
a lot of creative fire energy. This is like the sad reading I did about the cosmic fire. Okay, nirvana is a state beyond transcendence, freedom, light, perfect, peace. Okay, perfect, peace. This is Uranus energy. So now we have all the heavy hitters. We have Uranus coming through in your reading. We have uh, Jupiter. We have Uranus. Okay, something is um, going to be grounded. Something is going to be grounded. Okay, um, it's interesting because with all of this energy of Mercury, which is now moved from Aries into Taurus, Uranus is in Taurus, so there's going to be um, an opening up of communication, okay, that gears toward value, appreciation, love, right? Venus is, Taurus is ruled by Venus, which is the planet of relationships, finances, sex, um, value, appreciation, all of these things. So this full moon in Libra is bringing up a lot of energy surrounding, right? Forgiveness, um, acceptance, and the veil being lifted. And um, through all of these entanglements, um, the sun making manifest something that's very powerful, something that's being activated, something that is transcending time, space, and again, perfect peace. I feel like someone is being activated, right? Light body, you know, this energy of this full moon in Libra could be you coming into balance with like a lot of things in terms of your diet, your energy, your frequency. But that's all I have for you guys, Sagittarius. Full moon in Libra, let's get Divine advice for Sagittarius placements. Divine advice for Sagittarius placements for full moon in Libra. We have the seven of wands, the seven of fire, okay? Um, so the seven of wands is all about, you know, defending what you believe in, right? Um, this could be like releasing judgment, blocking out all that is contrary to this Nirvana energy, you know, releasing the density, right? So that you can move into your light body so that you can receive higher cosmic fire wisdom, um, so that you can move into this higher love frequency, um, whatever this, um, pure peace um, beyond transcendence means for you. Okay. So again, seven of wands is like defending, right? Defending your beliefs, defending the magic, right? Look at the unicorn. The unicorn could be a second, a synchronicity for someone. Um, um, all of the, the fairies is something magical, something ethereal about what's taking place uh, for Sagittarius placements, okay? So this is about defending the magic, defending the magical child within, right? We have the King of Wands, which is Aries energy. It's a lot here to do with the magic, a lot here to do with pure magic, which is pure energy, which is the energy of the child, okay? Let's get that... Um, Message in for Sagittarius placements. Seven of fire. Seven of fire. Personal best. Going the distance. Perseverance. Non-conformity. I'm unstoppable. My passion pushes obstacles aside as I engage in sustained effort. I know how to bend, but I don't compromise on what's most important to me. If others aren't happy with the course I'm on, 
I don't have to let their concerns affect me. I release the temptation to resist challenges and I trust that I can make things happen as I live life on my own terms. Inspired solutions present themselves. Inspired solutions present themselves. Allow the magic to be present. Get lost in the magic and soar. Sagittarius placements. placements. Full moon and Libra. Cardinal Earth energies. The goat. Capricorn, please. What's the faded overall energy? One card, please. We have the chariot, okay? We have the chariot. I believe... You could be connected to a Libra. I think Libra also got the chariot. Um, so, when the chariot comes out, there's doubt, you know, uh, lack of confidence to continue the course. This could have something to do with some type of traumatic event um, revolving around um, transportation, um, something to do with the vehicle, travel plans are delayed. But, you know, the chariot is number seven. It's drive, it's passion, it's forward movement. In reverse, it's the exact opposite. So there's something that's delayed. There's something that you feel that you have lost control of or that um, you no longer want to control. Either way, you know, the chariot, no matter what, in reverse or not, it's revved up. It's powerful energy. It's just blocked right now. Okay? Something has to happen to get it going. And when it when it when that happens, it's going to go full force. But right now, there's a blockage. Someone does feel um, like they're out of control, or that they don't have the confidence to move forward in some way. This could also indicate um, a cancer of significance coming through. Um, the fourth house energy um, is the heart, the the hearth. In the home, so this could have something to do with um, family or maternal energy or feminine energy. Cancer. What else for Capricorn placements? We have the Page of Cups. Insight card from Mysteries and the Stars. Okay, we got two. I'm just going to... I just want one card. Okay. What else for Capricorn placements for the full moon in Libra? One card, please. And we have fluid. Okay. Going with the flow. Okay, so the Page of Cups, Page of Love in reverse, okay? Um, so the Page of Cups is, you know, typically it's about that first spark of intuition, right? Happiness, love, youth. This could have something to do with um, a water sign child um, with the... Uh, chariot in reverse and the page of love or the page of cups in reverse also this could have something to do with a miscarriage or um fertility treatments you know uh, something to do with infertility or um a medical procedure where a child was lost or um a choice was made uh to terminate something but um the page of cups in reverse can indicate um turning down an offer of love or, you know, the inability to forgive, right? This full moon in Libra, the main energy for the collective is forgiveness, right? Releasing the burden. You know, you can't drink poison expecting someone else to die. That poison is within you. When you can't forgive, when you hold a grudge, it eats away at you, at your growth, at your healing, okay? So... Maybe there's a need to forgive oneself, okay? Um, there could have been some type of um, accident or some type of 
remember, this is all energy and energy is fluid. So this could be past energy. This could be the energy that I'm picking up on now or future energies that all relate right to this full moon in Libra. So someone could be suffering because of a choice, choice, choice that they made. Um, and is having a difficult time forgiving themselves. Maybe because of, you know, with all of this water, cancer, energy, page of love, I'm also getting something to do with like, something to do with vehicular homicide or something to do with someone being negligent behind the wheel. Um, something that maybe, maybe had involved alcohol where something was lost because of someone's um, choices. Okay, a need to forgive. You may not be forgiven by someone, but if you forgive yourself, that's the first step. Okay, um, that's for some of you, not all of you. Okay, um, the page of cups in reverse again could be indicatory of you know walking away from a situation, no longer wanting to accept someone's apology or to work something out with someone, and that's your choice as long as it's not from a place of anger. Or revenge if you truly are at peace with your decision you don't have to accept someone's offer of a new beginning all right but the page of cups in reverse um, indicates insecurity right lack of confidence immaturity insecurity just not being overall satisfied or happy with where things are going in your existence, okay? So, the chariot in reverse could indicate, you know, an imbalance, differences within a connection that were hard to overcome, like differences in age or religion or spirituality or race. And the next card that you got is a fluid card, okay? Now, whenever I get the fluid card, this is all mutable energies. So, so far in the reading for you, you have a lot of water, okay? Capric Capricorn, um, you have Cancer, you have all of the water signs for sure. You have all of the mutable signs. The mutable signs are Virgo, Sagittarius, Gemini, and Pisces, okay? Um, the fluid card also indicates like non-binary energy, um, someone who could be struggling with their sexuality, someone who is trying to accept themselves as they are, um, trying to have someone accept them for who they are. Someone may be coming to a realization that someone will never accept them for who they truly are. They have to be honest with themselves and self-acceptance, self-love emanates outwards and everything else flows from that. All right, so here, um, someone feels misunderstood, okay? Someone is very emotional or has been or moved through a very emotional space because the fluid card indicates like being free, right? Um, changing with the tides, moving into an unconventional space that maybe everyone does not agree with, but they don't have to right? This is about being unrestricted. This is about being true to you, okay? And um, accepting oneself first. 14 reduces to five. I feel like there is a major shift, a major changing of the tides um, that is taking place for someone after a period of loss, after a period of emotional turmoil, maybe even addictions, or a very tumultuous um, relationship where someone is finally being true to them. You could be taking a 
vacation finally because maybe there was a delay before you could be going off to do some healing work on a retreat because I don't see your energy here I don't see earth energy in the in, in your spread um but you know this could represent someone that's deciding to leave you or walk away from you or to separate themselves from a situation ultimately um there is a lot of self-acceptance here there's a lot of um self-forgiveness here as someone is moving forward all right I feel like someone could be deciding to move towards something that flows okay something that flows okay maybe someone could be moving towards a mutable sign and there could be someone here that is very much frustrated feeling out of control feeling that they're losing control of their child or losing control of someone um ultimately the main uh theme here is about releasing control and surrendering and uh having to look deeper into our triggers right page of love is scarcity mindset things that could stem from childhood from inner childhood wounding okay but ultimately there is a change there is a shift that is uh taking someone into a new flow um into a new experience where they're no longer restricted okay and that can only be a beautiful thing right someone is deciding to focus on themselves and that's one of the main themes of this full moon in libra right veils are lifting and we're being forced to know ourselves to decide to take action to heal okay so let's get your divine advice capricorn placements Divine advice for my Capricorn placements. You guys have the 10 of Earth. So there's the Earth. There you are, okay? Um, I feel like there could be some type of massive healing um, that's taking place with family, right? We have this Cancer energy in the beginning, right? Maternal energy, the heart, the heart, the home, um, the fourth house, the foundation, right? The house doesn't fall when the bones are good. I feel like the root of the issue was damaged and a lot of everything that grew from it became warped and now there's some type of balance that's coming in okay um the ten of pentacles is all about um you know things uh balancing out and a completion that is taking place right that is leading to a true new foundation being built on solid ground, right? Birthright, inheritance, um, true stability and security. And this could also have something to do with a new home or um, a taking root somewhere else that's like all you ever dreamed of okay and of course the ten of pentacles can be relationships it can be um a new position job um a family business etc but it looks very promising okay um ten of earth for capricorn Ten of Earth. Affluence, material abundance, mastery, financial security, inherited wealth, and knowledge. I am now able to step back and observe the results of what I built through my dedication and hard work. I claim ownership of the castles I built that have taken form in the material world. I have achieved mastery and inherited treasures of knowledge and experience. Thanks to all I have been through, I smile appreciatively at my run 
of good fortune. Okay, so through the rain and storms, through the loss and regret, the seas are calm again. Now something can last through the rain and storms. Something is lasting. Something has cleared. The sea is no longer shop choppy. You can see the shoreline and here you can rebuild on solid ground. Full moon and Libra Capricorn placements. Aquarius now we're going to move on to Aquarius. Full moon in Libra. Fixed air. The water bearers. Please show me clearly what I need to see for Aquarius placements for the full moon in Libra. What's the faded overall energy? One card, please. You have the high priestess. Okay, so you could be connected to Sagittarius energy. Sagittarius got the high priestess also. Okay, this is about um, someone highly intuitive, connected to the subconscious mind. Um, Archangel Gabriel, right? This is like water, connectivity, relationships. Two energy is all about um, possible conflicts, but it's gestation, it's coming together, it's couples. Um, the high priestess is between the pillar of wisdom and knowledge. So there's something here about being highly intuitive. Uh, the keeper of secrets, say, sitting and standing in your knowing, okay? Someone is highly in, you know, highly psychic, is in tune with their psychic abilities. Aquarius placements. So this could be um, moon energy. So um, any of the water signs coming through for you. What else for Aquarius? The full moon in Libra. We have the chariot. The chariot has been powerful in this full moon in Libra reading. A lot of signs have gotten the chariot. Um, however, this is the first time the chariot has come out in the upright position. Okay. So, definitely moon energy coming through for you. Um, cancer energy coming through for you. Again, all of the water signs. The chariot is number seven. And sevens indicate travel. Um, passion, drive, forward movement, victory. Okay confidence and courage to overcome any obstacle okay that's what i'm seeing for you um aquarius that's what i'm seeing for you you're extremely tapped in and you know where you're headed you know where you're going you know what you want you know how to get it you are i know one more card for Aquarius. We have passion. Yeah, you know. You know what you want, right? You're intelligent. You're the intellect. Okay, you're the rebel. You um, are the revolutionary, right? Right now, your ruling planet is in Taurus. So you are, like, having Uranus a hammer into your subconscious um everything that revolves around love worth self-respect value relationships okay and this full moon in libra is only going to enhance that right because libra is all about the balance um that comes into play with relationships okay so i mean this is like really self-explanatory to me um you know what you want you're connected to your subconscious thoughts and your mind and mind um, you're receiving a lot of information. You've done a lot of work on yourself. Um, you can't get to the position of the high priestess unless you have experience um, uh, transformation through the dark. Okay? You know what you want. You know your mind. You know your heart. You're going after it. Seven is very spiritual number. Okay? It's about gifts. It's about creative fire, passion.
conquest, victory. And what do you have? You have passion. This card happens to represent water, okay? Uh, the passion through water, right? Archangel Gabriel. This is like purification. Um, this is like judgment energy, really. Um, through fire and water, we forge. We create, right? Alchemy. Um, so, um, I feel like something is um, being birthed here. Something emotionally fulfilling. And the most important aspect of this passion, it's newness. You're moving towards something new. You're trusting your intuition because you know, okay? You're trusting your intuition because you know. Now, I will have to say this, Aquarius placements, um, this energy is coming through very, very strong for those who have um, their moon in Aquarius because we have the high priestess here as well. Of course, it's all of the um, um, Aquarius placements, but with the high priestess here, it's moon energy being highlighted, okay? So if your moon is in Aquarius, then this is going to resonate with you um, deeper, okay? But this is something that you're moving to quickly. You're moving quickly. You're traveling. You're um, migrating. You are, you know, moving towards someone, maybe a cancer, um, maybe someone who has cancer, highly aspected in their chart. Maybe someone who has Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces, highly, as highly aspected in their chart. Or water placements, highly aspected in their chart. But again, this is about starting a new project, right? Um, this could be a spiritual business. This could be partnering with someone um, and m building on some type of creative endeavor, okay? That you're extremely passionate about, extremely knowledgeable about, okay? You could bring the knowledge. They could bring the intuition, Okay, it can make a power couple duo type of situation. Okay, um, the passion is coming in um, with a new love or a new project, right? Um, this could be self love, this could be creativity. Um, but either way, this is about vulnerability, right? Someone here has a vast amount of emotional intensity. That, of course, they could hide. Aquarius energies sometimes can be detached from their emotions depending on other placements in your chart. Some of you could have water placements in your Venus, in your um, rising. Um, that could counteract that detached energy that Aquarius energies can sometimes have in regards to their emotions. It doesn't mean that they're any less emotional, okay? A lot of times during the full moon energy, um, all of that detached energy that you step away from most of the times, uh, Aquarius, is, um, you can't hide it during the full moon energy. So if you don't even have a lot of water in your chart and you are the type of Aquarius energy that kind of detaches from your emotions, I feel like something with this full moon in Libra, it's like certain things you can't hide. You may notice that sometimes certain things might come up for you during the full moon or the new moon is because the water is moving you, okay? It's bringing out the emotion. Um, but um, ultimately here, there's a vulnerability that's taking place. This is almost like you're not even afraid to show the vulnerability. You know what you want. You're going after it. You're trusting your intuition or you're working with someone who is very intuitive that's bringing out that emotion in you. The passion in you and you can't run from it it's like you're charging at it or the force is coming together um, in a very um, undeniable way a right? um, there is uh, this intense longing that's being satiated this intense longing that is being healed through some type of purification process, okay? Um, and it's undeniable, okay? There is victory here. There is some type of initiation that you have made it through that's taking you um, deeper and higher into um, your passion. What comes after the chariot? Um, strength, right? It's eight energy there's something that's coming into balance as above so below 
um, infinite possibilities through purification and love is what I'm getting for you, Aquarius placements with this full moon in Libra, right? A win-win outcome is in the forecast. Definitely, I see that for you, Aquarius placements. Let's get you guys uh, divine advice, okay? Divine advice for Aquarius placements, please, for the full moon in Libra. Divine advice for Aquarius placements with the full moon in Libra. We have the Ten of Fire. Wow. Okay. Very powerful energy. Okay. Um, the Ten of Fire. The Ten of Fire for me is like, definitely, it's the Akashic Records. It's Cosmic Fire. It's downloads. It's activation. Akasha. Look, we have the High Priestess here. We have the chariot. Something is balanced. Something is moving forward. Um, there's travel. There's passion. There's purification. There's new love. There's a new project. Everything is coming into balance. And it's a completion. It's moving you into the Ace of Wands, which is your divine path and purpose, which is alchemical fire, which is discovery, which is, again, travel, new possibilities, magic. Again, an initiation has been passed. Ten of Wands, there's nothing left to learn here. You are advancing to the next phase the next level. Okay. Wow. The energies that have come through for you, again, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, definitely, um, definitely Cancer. Um, all of the water signs, definitely. Um, so we have the Moon, Neptune, Pluto, and we have Sagittarius energy as well with the Ten of Wands and Fire. So Jupiter as well. So the Ten of Fire for Aquarius, your divine message, burning away, releasing the excess, ending, endings, clear ways for new beginnings. I may be overcommitted and have taken on too much burden. In this moment, I do the work of decluttering my life. All that I release will take new form and serve the greater whole. But I no longer need to hold on to it simply because it once seemed to have value for me. I think it I thank it for what it did for me, but say goodbye to the emotions, relationships, and situations that I realize do not belong in my life anymore. Yeah, you're moving on to the new cycle, a new initiation, right? Connectedness, passion, drive, victory, new love, new beginning, new partnerships, and divine and beautiful passion placements last but definitely not least okay my mutable water energies duality the fish okay show me clearly what I need to see for Pisces placements for the full moon and Libra what's the faded overall energy for Pisces placements The moon, the moon, okay? Powerful, powerful, okay guys? Um, let's get your second card. Three of pentacles and your insight energy. 
alchemy, wow, water, fire, alchemy. All right, Pisces placements. This is beautiful energy, okay? Um, so, wherever we have the moon, we have the moon card here. The moon is uh, number 18, reduces to nine. Nines always indicate some type of conflict possibly before an ending, but nines are also divine timing. Nines are also um, divine justice, cosmic justice evolution right as you're moving towards the end um there's something that you take with you that you take into the next cycle right so at any rate the moon here okay um indicates illusion now with it being in the upright position i do feel as though um you know this is your energy you rule the major arcana of the moon in tarot okay um so you could be dealing with another Pisces or another water sign, but this indicates um, in the upright position, um, high capabilities um, in connection to your intuition, um, understanding that fear is an illusion, seeing through the illusions, okay? Um, understanding that there are shadows in within, our, within ourselves and within others that need to be faced. Unchecked, these shadows can grow and consume us, right? So someone is connected to uh, their subconscious mind, right? Um, but of course, the moon can also indicate dreams, the imagination, um, something that's hidden on the path, you know, possible um, need to take precaution in some way. The moon can also indicate like psychic forces. A yearning, a deep emotional yearning. Okay. We also have the three of hope, the three of pentacles, right? Um, the three of pentacles uh, is Capricorn energy um, or earth, okay? And it's in the upright position. So here, this speaks about possibly a third party situation, right? Um, this could be a relationship. This could represent family. This could represent, you know, um, workplace, um, anything that is connected to three, right? Um, anything that throws you off of your balance or keeps you in balance, okay? But with the Three of Pentacles in the upright position, um, this speaks about like actually working well with others, um, moving into a space, right? Um, where you no longer have to fight to get your voice heard or battle just to contribute to the whole, okay? So I feel like, Pisces, there is something that you have trusted yourself with. You're coming into some type of um, understanding, okay? Whenever you have the moon energy here, this is like a deeper understanding of yourself, of your abilities, of your connection with your higher self, with your subconscious mind, right? Um, that you were not aware of before. Because I feel as though there may have been some things that you had to become aware of. You become aware of your own shadow and the shadow of others and the darker aspects of things, right? Maybe these are things that are within you or other people, right? Over giving, becoming a martyr, um, you know, delusions, um, there being some type of uh, 
connection to a deeper connection to what and how you give of yourself with there being some type of unconscious need attached to why you give or why you make yourself open and available in certain aspects and circumstances. So again, there are healthy aspects to Neptune and Pisces and there are unhealthy aspects, right? Um, some of the healthy ones are being highly intuitive, connected to higher consciousness, um, having a deep awareness, being open to different ideas, being giving and caring. Focused on your health. Some of the unhealthy aspects can be escapism, like I said, martyrdom, manipulation, emotional manipulation, maybe even unhealthy um, habits, addiction, etc. So I feel like coming through a space where there may have been danger on the path, there may have been a hostile environment, traps, hidden enemies, you know, deception and lies, things concealed, secrets, right? 12th house energy. Um, this could even represent someone that may have felt trapped or locked up or locked in to some situation that they, where they didn't have control, where they didn't have freedom. Um, and now, again, whether this is family, whether this is like some type of choice that led to imprisonment or um, being stuck in some type of illusion, energy vampires, situations like that. But ultimately, being in a space where you were giving, 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 and there was not a lot of reciprocity. There was not a lot of receiving as well as giving. Um, where there was a lot of energy being taken but not replenished. Where you were the most giving, caring, loving person in the room, right? Um, and now you have moved away from that toxicity. You moved away from the competition, the interference, right? Even parts of yourself that may have been in those spaces. Because as Pisces energy, you do take on a lot of energy of those that are around you. You have found a way to place yourself outside of that space, right? Three of Pentacles is all about um, new solutions, right? new collaborations I feel like you have moved into a new home or you have found a new career path or you're in a new relationship that is give and take that there is reciprocity where you do feel like you can contribute to the whole and create something new and that's valued um, in the situation okay um, it says here with the three of Hope, the three of pentacles, hope when it's limited to a boundary. If it wants to move further, then it should be done. Find storms before it reaches the flower. So yeah, you know, feeling stuck, feeling trapped, feeling as if you couldn't get past the thorns. You know, trying to reach the flower, but the thorns were always in the way. That you just could not reach your potential in this space. Now you're moving to a space where you can grow where there can be seedlings planted that will sprout, that will be beneficial, okay? That will take you to a place of, of, of growth and something that you can hold on to, a value. Um, yeah, so it's like you have come out of an illusion or you have broken past some type of self-imposed scarcity mindset of uh or even freed yourself of an institution through diligence through healing of some type of emotional or mental um confusion um or again a very dense or emotionally or toxic situation family relationship work environment and now you are flourishing now you feel as if you have something to hold on to okay and you're very thankful to be in this space. Um, and you're seeing things more clearly. 
okay? Again, with this full moon in Libra, it's all about forgiving yourself for all that you've been through, forgiving others, right? Don't drink the poison thinking it's going to kill your enemy. It's about releasing everything, the doubt, the pain, the anger, forgiving yourself so that you can be free, so that you can truly focus on you so that you can elevate and move through these spaces as these veils are continuing to be lifted. And your last card here is alchemy, right? It's alchemy, right? So, so far in your reading, you have a lot of water, right? A lot of emotional energy, intensity, Neptune, the moon, we have Saturn, we have Capricorn, we have Earth energy here as well. And then with the alchemy card, you could be dealing with a Sagittarius of significance because alchemy is temperance, right? And that's the card that Sagittarius um, is connected to. All right, number 35, 32 reduces to five. So there is some type of shift that's taking place. Something will never be the same. There's a new uh, paradigm. There's a new uh, timeline shift that's taking place for you. That's taking you into some sort of stability, right? Um, so this is about shifting your perspective, um, coming out of an illusion and creating magic, creating your reality, okay? Turning again um, those wounds into wisdom and iron into gold, but mostly um, the pain, okay, into a very powerful um, situation that is lighting the way for you, okay? In a way that is taking you into balance, okay? A way that is allowing you to master something, for yourself, okay? That's what the new moon in Libra is doing for you, Pisces placements, all right? You're being empowered, okay? You're being empowered. Let's get uh, divine advice for you. Divine advice for Pisces placements. Divine advice for Pisces placements. One card, please, divine advice. We have the nine of wands, the nine of wands, right? Okay, so yeah, so there's like um, a lot of water in your reading, but at the end we have uh, alchemy. So there is something that is sparking within you that's giving you uh, this desire to keep going forward, to keep being inspired, despite the battle being um, emotional, despite the battle being difficult, you have not given up. You are still on path and you are finding a way to uh, have courage to continue to move toward your true north, to, um, you know, move towards some type of recognition, all right? Look at that star she's holding. The Nine of Fire is all about continuing to move forward, continuing to be fueled um, and to create, okay, and blaze a trail um, on your path, not giving up determination and courage okay nine of wands for pisces placements nine of fire nine of fire divine advice for pisces placements full moon in libra caution uncertainty reevaluation and circumstances i need to stop wait and look around me before proceeding further my sense of uncertainty is my inner wisdom telling me to bring illumination to my situation, to allow insight to arise and guide me before I take my next step. Questioning is good. I will look carefully to see if a different path may be right for me at this time. So I feel like you guys have been through that period, right? Of doubt, of confusion, of danger on the path of some type of poisonous situation, of an illusion, of something that may have been um, borderline obsessive or um, like some type of emotional chaos, right? Um, deep, deep-seated emotions, borderline hatred. The moon is all of that, right? Lies, deception, pain, um, psychic forces, etc. You were able to move through it, right? And you had to take a step on your path and decide which path to go. Um, and even still, there may be something coming up with you where even though you may have moved through certain aspects, 
there is still something that you have to be prepared for. And it may be time to step back and to, um, to focus, really focus in on where you really want to move going forward. The full moon in Libra is going to allow that energy to come in for you, right? It's a, lot, a time to evaluate relationships so that you can really find balance, okay? So that a win-win outcome can come into effect for all. Okay, Pisces placements? So we're going to end it there with the messages. And we're going to do one final um, message for the collective to end the reading. Okay, so the full moon and Libra. Divine advice for the collective for the full moon and Libra. Divine advice for the collective for the full moon and Libra. A win-win outcome is in the forecast. It's all about forgiveness, focusing on your healing, letting go of grudges as the veil is lifted. And we move into the magical, most magical hour of all. Divine advice for the collective for the full moon in Libra. We're going higher. We're going higher, right? It's the higher self, right? It's forgiveness. It's self-love. It's the veil being lifted, right? It's focusing on yourself the inner work that's needed so that you can go higher. You are not alone. You've never been alone. This full moon in Libra is bringing in the balance, right? Bringing in the balance. Higher self is the divine advice for the collective. Higher self an eternal, omnipotent, conscious, and intelligent being who is one's real self. Okay. The higher self, divine advice for the full moon and Libra for the collective. You are your higher self. Your body is believed by some to be the physical manifestation of your higher self's desire to experience the human condition. Within it lies your spirit, your higher self, and your ego, your lower self, and the potential for the two to be expressed. To live a life under the direction of your higher self, trust and surrender are needed. This mode of living where control is taken from the ego to the higher self it is, is, is experienced as moving from 3D reality to 5D ascended more conscious realities of the vortex this lifestyle is entered into with specific vibration meditation and engaging in your passions move you into the frequency some people who believe that the higher self is distinct from oneself believe that it speaks to you via your emotions and that the joy you receive from pursuing your passion is how the higher self affirms your purpose the higher self delivers feelings of joy and happiness or an unshakable knowing concerning your purpose so that you are encouraged to live it by embracing your passions and allowing yourself to be lifted by them you will see that being your higher or lower self is merely a choice making choices that either lift you up or drag you down is a reflection of which self you're allowing yourself to be 
again, this is all about balance, right? Balance within yourself, balance within your connections, balance within your relationships, okay? Um, some of the key words here for a higher self, escape, remember, morality, wisdom, growth, experience, lessons, connection, higher density, guidance, ancestors, higher calling, clear cognizance, authenticity, merger, rise to the occasion, mentor, deceased, forgiveness, right? Forgiveness, savior, trust, quit, refuge, surrender, the noun, compromise, multidimensionality, coming of age, consciousness, wholeness, projections, missing someone, okay? Some of the uh, lower aspects or shadow aspects to be mindful of during this period, uh, tough love, passed on, parenting, jail, imprisonment, elders, soul retrieval, okay, empath, em energy vampires, beauty industry, um, glamour magic, illness, departure, desperate, okay, uh, transfusion, self-sacrifice, so all of these things came up through all of the signs, through all of the messages, okay? The main purpose here is forgiveness, doing the self-work, integration, and finding balance, okay? And connecting with your higher self. The blocked message. For anyone who needs it, okay? Your inability to let go of the past and a romanticized notion of someone within it is the cause of a poetic depression that keeps you in a state of longing. Remember that the love and lessons of the past will always be with you and sadness doesn't have to be. All right, this is something that someone could have moved through. A blockage that someone's already healed through and moved past. And for some, you're right in the smack dab middle of it and some you're moving through it, okay, slowly but surely. Also understand, okay, that while moving through these blockages and cycles, you may find your pain in another. It will be up to you to let that pain be what allows connection, having some sense knocked into you or be the catalyst for relapse. You will find your pain in another. It will be up to you to let that pain be what allows connection. Having some sense knocked into you or be the catalyst for relapse, okay? So, this is speaking about, once again, letting go of the past, having romanticized notions of others, okay, which is causing a poetic depression, keeping you in a state of longing, um, and also, you know, being a martyr, also um, taking on the energy of others, taking on other people's pain, right? Um, having the discernment to move you into the spaces that you need to be moved into for healing. Allowing that experience, right? Traumatic experience, painful experiences, choices that we make sometimes lead to pain but sometimes those situations have to happen so that yes sense could be knocked into us so that we can begin a process of facing certain aspects of ourselves of others so that that can be a catalyst for our growth not for us to go deeper into some type of lesson that we don't want to repeat, okay? Your divine message for the full moon in Libra, for the collective, is that you will feel confident in taking a leap of faith. 
a courageous exit and a bold move, allowing yourself to be guided by the strength of others and your own truth will inspire action that is in alignment with your higher self. After embracing higher ideals and taking conscientious action, you will realize that you are the best possible version of yourself. That is what the full moon in Libra is doing, right? It all revolves around forgiveness. It all revolves around focusing on self and growing, finding balance, going deeper and going higher, okay? Powerful, powerful energy. Final cards in the reading for the collective for the full moon in Libra. A final message, divine advice for the full moon in Libra for the collective. A final message for the collective. This is about reinvention, right? This is about reinvention. A new start. Becoming lighter through forgiveness. What else? Divine advice for the full moon in Libra? Yeah. Being guided out. Being guided out, right? As the veil is being lifted. As the veil is being lifted. Being guided out. And being open and surrendering to the most magical hour of all, right? 1221. The veil is lifting, balance is being restored, being guided out of the shadows, right? Being guided in, inward, to go upward, right? Your higher self is guiding you through the valley of the shadows towards this reinvention, right? I feel like this full moon in Libra is about like coming out of hermit mode, taking everything that was learned in the dark and there being some type of major revelation. What was in the dark, what was growing in the womb is now coming out for all to see. Your higher self has been guiding you through the process, okay? And now there is balance that's being restored. Something about polarity, something about balance, okay? Your higher self has guided you out, has guided you through. And where has it guided you to? To you, to balance right? Soulmate energy. It's like two of cups energy. It's two. It's balance. It's kind of like the same energy, right? Balance within yourself. Doing the work on self, right? Releasing the density. Forgiveness of self. Letting go of the grudge. Becoming lighter. Less dense. Being prepared for the most magical hour of all when that veil lifts, right? Doing the work so that a win-win outcome can come to pass. So the message for the collective here is forgiveness. Trusting yourself, going deep within so that you can ascend, so that you can meet yourself where you are, so that you can truly 
begin the process of evolution, to evolve, right? Evolve. There's love in evolution. And when there's true self-love, self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, everything emanates outwards from that. Then you start to magnetize, right? Once you're in your heart space, you start to magnetize what's meant for you towards you. And this full moon in Libra is the catalyst for that energy. It's bringing in the soul family. It's bringing in the soul tribe. It's bringing in messages from the dove, right? It's bringing in the truth. It's bringing in the love.